I get tired of setting up my cameras and gear and then having to break it down. You know, and this is all before I start editing. But one thing that is easy is finding music and sound effects for all of my videos. And you were listening to them in this intro and you're going to be hearing it for the rest of the video. And I'm going to show you how it all works and how good it actually is. This service is amazing by Epidemic Sound. I'll be talking more about them in the future. Hold on. Okay, now we're ready. So let's get started. The Elgato HD60S is a brand new external capture card which packs some powerful features in this little guy. And I can say it slaps. Now the two main features added to the HD60S are increased capabilities when it comes to capture and pass through resolutions. The second one is VRR or variable refresh rate. This capture card HD60X is extremely useful and it's really powerful. Now with next gen consoles, this is what this really takes into consideration. Most of the consoles today, except for the Xbox X series and S and the PlayStation 5, those are compatible with the HD60X, but as far as like older, newer generation models, it doesn't support that because those consoles don't support VRR. But you can be sure that next gen consoles that come out from now on should, should, support VRR. But with VRR to the side, increased capabilities with your capture and pass through resolutions are incredible with this little guy. So for $200, is this thing worth it? And should you get it? The Elgato HD60S is one of the best external capture cards out there right now, but it doesn't come without some flaws. I've extensively tested this capture card for the last few weeks and it's not completely perfect, but it is gonna get you most of the way there, at least for now. Especially with next gen consoles coming out, it's gonna be very useful. Now I am an Algoda partner and they did send this model to me for free, but I can say whatever I want about it because transparency is one of the biggest things I value on this channel. I've also gone through so many tests with this and I'm not gonna just tell you the good things about it. There are some things that I don't like. Now, Adam, my editor is gonna hate me for this because every time I add a new video onto this series, the biggest fill in the blank tutorial on the internet, uh, I make a lot of them and they're a lot of work. So he's probably pulling his hair out right now. <laughs> Before I continue, it's important to note that Elgato has officially discontinued the OG capture card, the Elgato HD60. There's no longer gonna be in production and they're no longer gonna be sold. So whatever you can get your hands on, that's what there is. I've got one and I'm gonna keep it. It's gonna be an OG and it works still pretty good. And now with the Elgato HD60S Plus, this is kind of becoming the HD60S standard now. Still obviously got its normal settings and you know, it's definitely overpowered compared to the HD60S. And now the Elgato HD60X is gonna be taking the place of the HD60S Plus. All of these X's and S's are getting complicated, but essentially the HD60S Plus is gonna be $180 now instead of 200 and the HD60X is gonna be $200. So it's taking the place of the HD60S Plus. It's gonna be the same price with extra features. So that's pretty cool, I like that. Good job, Elgato. And now the part that you've been waiting for, the Elgato HD60S has VRR or variable refresh rate and also has higher resolutions when it comes to its capture and pass through capabilities. Let's talk about that. First, it's important to know what capture and pass through means because they're two different things. Depending on what your setup is, you're gonna use this differently. So for a dual PC stream setup, a single PC stream setup, or an added complication of having a console in your streaming setup. Knowing the difference between capture capture and pass through because they are big is very important. Capture goes from your USB-C connection from the HD60X into your PC via USB. Now this goes into your streaming software like OBS or Dreamlabs desktop if you use that one, which is trash, or if you use XSplit or whatever other streaming software you use. That's your capture. It goes through USB connection into your stream software. This allows you to put all of your stream overlays, alerts and banners and whatever else you want onto your stream to keep things interesting. Pass through on the other hand goes from the output on your HD60X through HDMI into your monitor or TV, depending on what screen you have. And this is a completely clean signal, so it's not interrupted by all your overlays or donations and things like that. Now your video delay between your capture and your pass through is virtually non-existent. It is there with about 31 millisecond delay between your capture card or your console, I should say, or your dual PC stream all the way to the outputs on the capture card. 31 milliseconds is the least amount of delay that I've ever seen on a capture card and that is currently out right now. 
It's mind blowing. It's so small and hard to see with the naked eye, but if you slow it down, it can be noticeable, but you're not gonna be doing any of that. Agata advertises this capture card as having ultra low latency, which is what I've found in my testing so far. So here is an example of what I'm talking about. I have my laptop here and I've fired up Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm duplicating my display from my laptop through the HDMI out. This is going to the HD60X and then the HD60S is plugged into my PC via the USB that comes with the capture card. This will allow me to preview my game in OBS. The pass through is going from the output on the capture card through HDMI and it's plugged into my left monitor here. You can see on the left monitor here that the pass through signal latency is virtually indistinguishable. It looks like it's completely in sync with no delay and it looks like the same through the capture on the right monitor in OBS. Now keep in mind this is for a dual PC scenario but the principle applies pretty much the same if you have a console connected. I did also test the delay here between the laptop and the pass through slash capture and it's about 31 milliseconds when you slow it down you can see it just a tiny bit but it's not that big of a deal if you're playing regularly and it's hard to detect with the naked eye i will also be doing a full guide on how to set up a console with a capture card of any kind particularly the hd 60x since it's going to be vrr and the future generation consoles are going to support vrr i'm going to do a full video on how to set up a console with your stream because it is an extra added uh, complexity so it can be pretty difficult and complicated subscribe and stick around if you want to see that coming out i also live stream on twitch so if you're lonely like me come say hi link is down below i stream every week maybe you got some questions now epidemic sound that i mentioned earlier is not sponsoring this video i just wanted to give them a spot because they really do have an amazing service i've used the music throughout this video and throughout most of my videos on the channel as well as all their sound effects they have a huge library and it's currently the biggest on the internet right now and if you use my link down below you get 30 days free so it's a 30 day free trial plus 50 percent off the year subscription and that discount only lasts about another month or two. It's gonna run out very quickly, so hurry up. Not many people get that. I have a unique code from Epidemic Sound. If you use FROST50 at checkout, you get 50% off your order. Now, one of the things I've been most excited about are the pass-through and capture resolutions. It can do a lot more than what the previous generations of capture cards could do. The HD60X has capture resolutions up to 1440p 60fps SDR, 1080p 60fps HDR, 4K 30fps HDR. It also has pass-through resolutions which are upgraded to 4K 60fps HDR, 1080p 240fps SDR, and 1440p 120fps SDR. So in case you want to stream at 1080p, which most people do, do at 120 frames per second, you can download that VOD and slow it down for your YouTube videos. Maybe you have an epic moment and want to slow it down to make it look really cool. You can do that at 120 FPS because you have all those extra frames to work with. And Algado has extra resources on supported resolutions if you want to dive deeper into this. That link is down below in the description. So the big selling point to VRR is allowing you to get the signal from your source to your monitor without seeing those yucky jitters and glitches that you might expect especially with newer gen consoles that can be less frequent now so vrr in the capture card will dynamically sync with your vrr capable monitor and your source for example a playstation 5 or maybe a xbox series x this will play the most accurate image and it'll look much nicer but why is this feature necessary or helpful in the hd 60x let me tell you why. During graphics intense parts of the game, your refresh rate is gonna continue to buffer essentially. This means that your console continually refreshes its refresh rate so that you can continue to game at an uninterrupted experience. Now keep in mind, you also have to have a compatible monitor with this and that's part of the drawback. Now, if you had a compatible monitor with this, your monitor would continually adjust to your console's refresh rate. Now with an HD 60X put into the line in between your monitor and your, your console, you're gonna have to continually have VRR supported to that monitor. And that's why the HD 60X is really powerful is that it supplies your VRR to your VRR compatible monitor. So if you have a console with VRR, but it's not working because either you don't have a capture card that supports it or your monitor that doesn't 
doesn't support it, it's gonna look like this with all the jitters and screen tearing. Now, VRR is active when your monitor's refresh rate is between 48 and 120 hertz. So any monitors that are 144 hertz, like mine, which is a 2K 144 hertz monitor, you're not gonna be compatible with VRR. Not a big issue, VRR is still pretty new. You could always get a new monitor that supports the 120 max refresh rate, or what Elgato could essentially do is add a firmware update, probably a firmware update, I don't even know. I hope it's not a hardware issue because then they've got to create a new capture card that supports higher refresh rates. But if Elgato can add an update to their software and just update the Elgato HD60X to support higher refresh rates like my 144Hz monitor, that would be great. Please Elgato, that would be nice. The HD60X supports AMD Forum VRR monitors as well as AMD FreeSync, but it doesn't support GeForce G-Sync, unfortunately. Kind of a big issue, especially because mine is G-Sync, but you know, I hope that changes in the future. I'll also put a link down below in case you want to dive deeper into compatible resolutions with the HD60X. Now the Agato HD60X is extremely powerful when it comes to a dual PC stream solution, because a lot of people are plagued with stutters and jitters when it comes to sending your signal from your main computer or your gaming PC through a capture card and into your stream PC. Now this is all of course if you have a compatible monitor with your setup. Now if your monitor is not picking up the pass through signal from your Elgato HD60X, here's a solution. Your monitor may not support the output or pass through resolution from your Elgato HD60X and you need to change that from your source, whether it's your console or maybe you're in a dual PC stream, you need to change that on your gaming PC. Assuming that you're duplicating your display from your display settings on your gaming PC, make sure you change change your output FPS or Hertz down to 60. Mine was set to 120 and it wasn't going through the pass through to my main monitor. So I changed that down to 60 and it worked just fine. Keep in mind that you will be limiting your main computer display when you reduce your refresh rate because this is obviously the only way to get your refresh rate to the capture card and to the pass through. However, I do have another solution to kind of work around this. So if you want to still stick at 120 FPS or maybe even 144 Hertz, you can do that. I have a video in the top right in the cards on how to set up a dual PC stream while still keeping your refresh rate so you don't cap that at 60 hertz or you know even lower than that. If you do want a refresher on the compatible resolutions with your HD60X, I will include a link down below. You can go check that out on Elgato's website. If you've enjoyed the video so far or if you've just found it helpful with a bunch of useful information, don't forget to leave a like on the video, help the video go out to the rest of the community, you know, push it on YouTube's algorithm. Thank you so much. Now, one issue that I have with this cap capture card and pretty much any capture card out there right now is it doesn't have multi-app support. And what I mean by that is being able to use it in OBS Studio and let's say Discord at the same time so that you wanna, for example, have your video like a video conference or a podcast on stream while you're recording and while you're talking to your guest on Discord or whatever app you're using. You can't use the video capture from your capture card going into OBS Studio and another app at the same time. So I've had an issue with that. I don't know why people aren't, you know, I've just, it's got to be a software update or something. It doesn't have to be a, a hardware issue, which I don't know enough about that. So maybe I'm wrong, but this is something that I've been wanting from Elgato and basically any other capture card out there recently, and it still hasn't been done. Oh, and did I mention that you can use the Elgato HD 60X with your camera and put it into your computer? So this is pretty much like a glorified Camlink 4K with VRR and all the other benefits to it. <laughs> now, 4K Capture Utility is an app from Elgato that allows you to get even more out of your HD60X capture card. And this also applies to a lot of Elgato's capture cards as well, including their PCIe capture cards that you plug right into your computer in your motherboard. Now, in order to be able to record HDR, which is high dynamic range footage, you have to use 4K capture utility. The HD60X allows onboard tone mapping so you can record raw HDR into your 4K capture utility while also outputting SDR signals to your stream software like OBS Studio. HDR or high dynamic range will allow you to have the flexibility to color grade and also adjust the brights and darks so that it is consistent with the rest of your video 
video and it looks good to your viewers. So it's gonna look much better. You can control all of your colors, color grade, correction, and lighting all in one go. It does look a little flatter or not as bright or dark. It's just got a washed out look, but it gives you a lot of flexibility in post when you're editing and when you wanna put that video out to YouTube at a high quality. You can also use the Streamlink feature in 4K Capture Utility so you can send your HDR signal to OBS Studio. This will also allow you to use your video capture device in multiple applications at the same time. So OBS Studio and Discord, for example. I will be making a full video on how to use 4K Capture Utility in the future, another video similar to this with the biggest tutorial online. It's gonna be really nice. So subscribe and stick around if you're interested in seeing that. I have a ton of helpful resources around this topic, including gear links, which is down below. It helps support the channel, so thank you so much. I also have a Discord if you're interested. Maybe you're having issues with your setup. It doesn't have to be a capture card, you know, pretty much anything streaming related. I have a support team down in the description. Join our Discord and we can help you out. Hit that pineapple button so you can get access to the rest of the channel so that you agree to the rules and uh, type your message in the appropriate channel. I also do have a website with a page dedicated to dual PC streams, single PC streams, and incorporating a console or other devices into your stream. So if you're having issues or just wanna learn how to do it all, link is down below to that one website page. And finally, I do stream on Twitch every week. So if you wanna just come talk and Maybe you don't have any friends like me. We can chat and make some new friends. Link is down below. I stream every week. Come check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support. I'll see you next time. But until then, make something great. Wow, that was a good video. I enjoyed that. Lots of work. Oh boy. Adam, enjoy editing this. Oh, hi kitty. You're cute.